Welcome back. Aaron here, Simon Says Farms, and yes, Liz saw Moo the Angel. We'll get back to the Moo Angel thing in a minute, in a little while. So yesterday, which was Friday, crazy week as you guys know, if you've been following Aaron, Liz, Simon Says Farms, that white barn live 24 hours a day on YouTube. We raise goats, we make soap, lotion, own a coffee company, things like that. Um, he please hit the subscribe button down below. I know about 30% of you don't, and it really, really helps. If you hit that button, actually, what helps more than the subscribe button, which is funny, is the thumbs up, or the thumbs down if you want. Go ahead and hit it. I know there's people out there that don't like us. In life, there will always be people that don't like you. You just gotta move on. And part of my story today is a little bit about that. So as we build a business here, because this is a business, we are not a charity, we are not a rescue, we got into all this, oh, it's windy and cold out here. I'm gonna talk about the storm too, what is it? Ophelia coming up the coast in a minute too. So we got a couple things to talk about. But as you build a business, you got two different ways to be successful. One, hang on, gotta fix my hat. One is to just do your best and build the biggest business as possible. Let's think about it like a building. Just build the biggest building in town. That's it. You want to be the best? You want to be the biggest? Just figure it out, learn, and build the biggest building. The other option you have is to build your building and then just tear everybody else's down around you, which is pretty much mean and rude and doesn't make a lot of friends. So we're in the build the biggest building in town concept. We're not trying to tear anybody else down. So, one time, way back, and some of you guys might remember this story, Kevin and I would go to the Durham Fair, and then Liz and Angie and Tyler would meet us there. And we would do the Durham Fair, sell our swanky sauce, actually. This was pre-COVID, and I think we did it three times. Maybe two. Oh, I forgot my super huge scoop inside. Oh, man. You guys might have saw that super huge scoop. There's a picture of it right there. Uh, super cool. I'm going to bring it out here and use it for the goat grain. But for now, I'm going to use just this and scoop three half scoops. And then head over this way. So, yeah, we used to do the Durham Fair. We used to do farmer's markets way back in the day. I do have a degree in internet business, and I really focus on the internet side of our business. And it got to a point where mathematically, between the price, oh man, hang on. In the price of renting the booth, because you gotta pay, and some of these events were thousands of dollars, uh, more like 1,500, just to get your booth in, just permission to come in, set up, all that stuff. Never mind the food you're gonna spend on eating between you and Kevin and Tyler and everybody there. And then all the stuff you have to buy to set your booth up, right? Which is a one-time charge, but do you really need all these folding tables? Do you really need this banner you use once a year for this event? So it costs a lot, right? And then some farmers markets are like, some farmers markets will let vendors in for free. Some, it's like 10 bucks. So it got, and then you're there all weekend and you sell a couple things and it's all math. It's all simple math. What did it cost me to set all this up? What are all these hours of my life worth? Because your life, your time is very, very, you can't get any more, right? What do we live to? 85, 90, maybe 100 if we can push it. Right? You can't get more of that. So you gotta put a value on your time, no matter what. Put a value on your time and learn to say no. And then from there, Tyler's moving the tractor. Oh, we're gonna be careful at this door, very careful. We don't want them attacking me again. We're gonna open the top and look at Sadie. I knew it was gonna be you, number one. At Ladies, the grain is that way. Sadie, Lucy, Amy, everybody. Oh, Dolce. Everybody. We got to go that way. So please get away from my door. We're going the other way. Okay. Ladies, I got to get through. I made it. I made it. 
Let's go this way. Now I forgot what I was saying. I totally forgot. Girls, you messed me up. Ready, set, go. Go, 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 go. Everybody go. Go get your grain. Go get your food. Good girls, good girls. They get so much exercise now. Pretty crazy. Um, yeah, there we go. I remember what it was now. We got to the point where they weren't worth it. You would spend all this money on, where are my scissors? You would spend all this money I'm, on setting up this booth and hanging out at these fairs and doing all this and the math wasn't worth it. Now some of them, like the big Durham fair was, was always worth it. It was such a big event. Oh, I can't get this thing open one handed because I forgot my tripod and I got this guy staring at me being like, hey doofus, where'd your scissors go? You know, if you had your hoof trimmers, you could open it. Well, I think Tyler or Kevin took the hoof trimmers out of here and now we don't have any. There. So yeah, it got to the point where we stopped doing the fairs and then this is where the build, tearing building down, tearing the building down story starts. We were at the Durham Fair and we were trying to be very nice. Some of you remember way back then, in our original Durham Fair setup, it was only Swanky Sauce. And then our second year Durham Fair setup, it was Swanky Sauce and goat milk lotion. Our third attempt at the Durham Fair, we wanted to bring in the whole product line. Swanky sauce, goat milk lotion, goat milk soap, lip balm, no coffee. Coffee wasn't out yet, right? And we were told, no, you can't do it. And we were like, why? Why can't we bring in the soap? And they were like, we have too many soap people already. And come to find out, there's this one farm that didn't like us. <clears throat> he actually called me a jerk and told me I was gonna kill little kids with our lotion. He literally said that. Um, when Kevin and I, year one, went over to him and we literally started the conversation with, remember building the biggest building, like together? Um, he made soap, we made lotion. People would stop at our booth and say, oh, do you make goat milk soap? And we'd be like, no, we don't. I told him I was gonna send people from our booth, oh, if you want goat milk soap, there's a guy right up the hill. If you send people to us for goat milk lotion, like a little trade-off, we could work together. And then when he told me we we're gonna kill little kids making lotion because you need a license for that and blah, 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 we're like, we have the license. And he got all pissed off and panties in a bunch and whatever. So yeah, make a long story short, haven't really thought about that story in a long time. And then we meet these cool guys that make sweatshirts. Actually, Tyler's wearing one right now, some Connecticut farmer, like farm life sweatshirt. We bought Tyler a sweatshirt while we were up there at the Big E. By the way, the Big E is a huge Eastern state expedition. It's where they bring in all the states in New England, the one huge country fair, which is still half the size of like the New York State Fair or like you go out into the big, you know, Texas or Oklahoma or whatever. Those fairs are even bigger than this. And we combine five states together, maybe, I think. New York is not there, even though New York's part of Northeast, it's not part of New England. But um, yeah, so come to find out we're at this we're at this clothing guy and right next to us is another goat farm from Connecticut and we're like this is super cool they have everything neat pictures awesome display and Steve at the clothing place goes you need to go talk to and for somehow this story came up this Durham fair political you can't sell soap their story came up and he goes you got to go talk to Dave Dave, the same farmer that told us we were gonna kill little kids, harassed Dave because he makes goat milk soap and he tried to tear his business down too. So we go over and we talk to Dave and he's like, oh my God, don't get me started. Dave and his wife, super awesome, run this cool little farm in Connecticut. They too make goat milk soap. 
make lotion, make lip balm. They have all these different things. They have sugar scrubs and this and that. They even have a coffee line. They're literally pretty much the same business model as us. Super cool, we got along great. We all talked for like an hour and the wife comes over, it was great. She comes over and she goes, it's so nice meeting another goat farmer that doesn't hate you. And we're like, yeah, it's part of what we do. Hi, I'm making a video, I do this every morning. Oh, you're working. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's called work on a Saturday. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty fun. Yeah, it is fun. If you really like what you do. I do like what I do, thank you. Exactly. Okay, so we're gonna continue with my story. Okay, I'll leave. Now that Tyler interrupted, I but. I gotta go backwards. Okay. Yeah, go clean up. Um, he's cleaning today and working on some stuff in the garage. But uh, yeah, it was super cool meeting them. They were pretty awesome. But it's like, there's, you know what, I'm gonna put it down here. <clears throat> I'm gonna put it right down here at the bottom of the screen. Just in Connecticut alone, how many people live in Connecticut alone? And then what we'll do is we'll divide the number in half because half of them are probably either too young or too old or not able to purchase products online. We'll just say that. They don't have a credit card, they're too they're under 18 or they're super old and they're not even worried about soap or lotion or anything like that or whatever. So we'll just take the population of Connecticut only, divide it in half, put it at the bottom of the screen. If you're not selling that many orders a year, there's enough to go around for all of us to win. So that was a fun time. Now during that, and I'm gonna run here Actually, I'll run here, our time at the Big E. Liz and I, little date, got out, went to the Big E, ate a bunch of food we probably shouldn't have ate, watched a parade, looked at horses. Here you go. I tried not to film, so I didn't want it to be a video, but I did, and then we'll go back to the Moo Angel story in a minute.
know they're not quiet now. There are many horses. Their big horse friends are behind them. So that was pretty cool. It's a good time. We got a bunch of beads and everything. So now while we were talking to this other awesome goat farmer, there's this screen behind us from the Connecticut agriculture. And for those true villagers that have watched like everything we put out, you might remember over a year ago, there was a production crew on site here at the farm filming video for an ad for Connecticut agriculture. We found one ad and it was all the goats running across the field. We never saw this ad. And Liz out of nowhere goes, oh my God, that's my moo. And then here's the ad. I'll run part of it here because I recorded the screen. That was amazing. You're talking to awesome goat farmers that don't hate you, that don't want to crush your business because they're jealous of what you do or they're upset that you're competing. This guy literally created a fake email address that was called like Connecticut Agriculture or Connecticut DE, Connecticut, you know, consumer protection at gmail.com, which is not the real one. And tried to shut this other guy, like so angry that somebody's stomping on his turf or whatever. It was so bad. And we're having this awesome, heartfelt, cool conversation about <clears throat> how he's getting into cheese now. He's got some cows. This other, the good farmer family that, that he's doing. He's a retired police officer, like super cool guy. And uh, and then Moo, the angel, is like, don't worry, I'm here. It was awesome. It was super awesome. And now, speaking of angels, let's all hope there's angels out there for everybody dealing with that storm coming up. If you take a look at this map, you can kind of see my writing here that there's the storm and my mom is right in it, but it's kind of off to the side. She's not worried about it, I don't think. I'm trying to get a hold of her. I haven't 
heard from her yet. But it's not that area is so used to hurricanes. The houses, <laughs> the houses are so far up off the ground. They're used to. But she just rented or leased a new car starting like yesterday or the day before, and I don't want her car to get floated away. Even though insurance covers all that stuff, but it's just a big, big, big headache. So hopefully all of the people in that area get through the storm okay. And it's not really a storm, but it'll be crazy. There's a dead tree over there. That's a squirrel moment. Yeah, there's a dead tree way back there that needs to come down. But uh, it's cold, it's rainy. It's gonna get ugly here soon and the auctions tonight. So hopefully you guys swing by, have a good time. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to bid. I know a lot of you love it. Some of you don't, but you can hang out, watch, chat, just be, be a part of it. We got some questions have come in already. A lot of breeding questions, things like that have come in. We'll answer those in between auction items and uh, we'll have a good time. I think Javier's mixing drinks too. So, oh, and we are, going to attempt to work on the internet today during all the rain so your cameras might go down they might not but we can't mess with it too much because we don't want to break it before the q a so i'm actually getting cold i'm like i shivered there for a minute i went like Woo. okay so i'm gonna let you go now that was it was super awesome seeing moo in that video that was that was really cool at that time during that conversation was just like you can't make that crap up all right have a good one. We'll see you guys again tomorrow.